Hey, good evening, good day. This is Rick. And I'm here with uh, more Neville Gutter quotes and maybe some um, free thought, free verse, whatever you might want to call it. Going off on tangents, this kind of thing. Let's have fun. Change your conception of yourself and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Stop trying to change the world since it is only the mirror. Man's attempt to change the world by force is as fruitless is breaking a mirror in the hope of changing his face. Leave the mirror and change your face. Leave the world alone and change your conceptions of yourself. Only when one is willing to give up his present limitations and identity can he become that which he desires to be? Take your attention away from your problem and the multitude of reasons why you cannot achieve your ideal. Concentrate your attention entirely upon the thing desired. All you can possibly need or desire is already yours. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. You are already that which you want to be, and your refusal to believe it is the only reason you do not see it. To attempt to, attempt to change circumstances before I change my own imaginal activity is to struggle against the very nature of my own being. For my own imaginal activity is animating my world. To rise in consciousness to the level of the thing desired and to remain there until such level becomes your nature is the way of all seeming miracles. Everything depends upon our attitude towards ourselves. That which we will not affirm as true, to, true of ourselves cannot develop in our life. Everyone is free to create his world as he wants it if he knows that the whole thing is responding to him. Enact a scene that implies you have what you desire. And to the degree that you are faithful to that state, it will unfold in your world and no power can stop it. For there is no other power. Dare to believe in the reality of your assumption and watch the world play its part relative to its fulfillment. Your subconscious impressions determine the conditions of your world. The subconscious is what a man is. The conscious is what a man knows. I and my father are one. But my father is greater than I. The conscious and subconscious are one, but the subconscious is greater than the conscious. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel is true, the subconscious can and must objectify. 
Your feelings create the pattern from which your world is fashioned. And a change of feeling is a change of pattern. Nothing comes from without. All things come from within. From the subconscious. Your world is your consciousness objectified. Waste no time trying to change the outside. Change the within or the subconscious impression and the without or expression will take care of itself. The conscious is personal and selective. The subconscious is impersonal and non-selective. The conscious is the, real, is the realm of effect. The subconscious is the realm of cause. These two aspects are the male and female divisions of consciousness. The conscious is male, the subconscious is female. The conscious generates ideas and impresses these ideas on the subconscious. The subconscious receives ideas and gives form and expression to them. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Once asleep, man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of self. Sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation, manifestation rests. Feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, the man who does not control his feelings may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the discipline of self to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. Assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled and continu continue feeling that it is fulfilled until that which you feel objectifies itself. If a physical fact can produce a psychological state, a psychological state can produce a physical fact. Feeling a state produces that state. Feeling a state produces that state. How successful you are on the outside is directly related to how relaxed you feel inside. Your emotional sense of well-being dictates your life. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. On the power of imagination. Imagination and faith are the secrets of creation. All things are possible to God and you found who he is. It is your own wonderful hum human imagination. That's God. An awakened imagination works with a purpose. It creates and con conserves the desirable. It creates and conserves the desirable and transforms or destroys the undesirable. It is imagination which makes one a leader, while the lack of it makes one a follower. Your present level of consciousness will only be transcended as you drop the present state and rise to a higher level. You rise to a higher level of consciousness by taking your attention away from your present limitations and placing it upon that which you desire to be. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the causes of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of disease. In both body and environment. 
The whole last world is no more than man's imagining pushed out. The whole last world is no more than man's imagination pushed out. No quality so separates man from man as does the disciplined imagination. Those who have given most to society are our artists, scientists, inventors, and others with vivid imaginations. Imagination is the only redemptive power in the universe. Imagination has full power of objective realization, and every stage of man's progress or regression is made by the exercise of imagination. When will and imagination are in conflict, imagination invariably wins. Your attention must be developed, controlled, and concentrated in order to change your concept of yourself successfully and thereby change your future. Imagination is able to do anything, but only according to the internal direction of your attention. When, you're, when you attain control of the eternal direction of your attention, you will no longer stand in shallow water, but will launch out into the deep of life. What we must work for is not the development of the will, but the education of the imagination and the steadying of attention. The undisciplined man's attention is the servant of his vision rather than its master. It is captured by the pressing rather than the, the important. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. Prayer is the master key. A key may fit one door of a house, but when it fits all doors, it may well claim to be a master key. Such and no less a key. Such and no less a key is prayer to all earthly problems. He who rises from his prayer a better man, his prayer has been granted. Prayer succeeds by avoiding conflict. Prayer is, above all things, easy, easy. Its greatest enemy is effort. Quotes on medication, meditation, <laughs> excuse me, meditation quotes from Neville Goddard. All that meditation amounts to is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention. Simply hold the attention on a certain idea until it fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. All, me all meditation ends at last with a thinker and he finds he is what he himself has conceived. The drum of life is a psychological one, which we bring to pass by our attitudes rather than by our acts. Everything in the world bears witness of the use or misuse of man's inner talking. The individual's inner speech and actions attract the conditions of his life. With words or inner talking, we build our world. Our inner conversations represent, in various ways, the worlds we live in. Everything in this world bears witness of the use or misuse of man's inner talking. Our present mental conversations do not recede into the past, they advance into the future to confront us as wasted or invested words. All things are generated out of your imagination by the word of God, which is your own inner conversation. And every imagination reaps 
its own words, which it has inwardly spoken. The conditions and events of your life or your children form from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Once asleep, man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of self. Sleep conceals the creative act while the objective world reveals it. In sleep, man impresses the subconscious with his conception of himself. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. I like that one. Easy practical advice. <laughs> well, hopefully easy for you. I don't know if it's easy for me, but I can sure keep it in mind, you know. I think I never do go to sleep, but I do wake up feeling discouraged. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. There would be no progress in this world were it not for man's dissatisfaction with himself. There would be no progress in this world were it not for man's dissatisfaction with himself. There is nothing wrong with our desire to transcend our personal state, our present state. There is nothing wrong with our desire to transcend our present state. It is natural for us to sing, to seek a more beautiful personal life. It is right that we wish for greater understanding, greater health, and greater security. Do not try to change people. They are only messengers telling you who you are. Evaluate yourself and they will confirm the change. For life makes no mistakes and always gives man that which man first gives himself. Do not waste one moment in regret, in regret. For if you think feelingly of the mistakes of the past is to reinfect yourself. Man's cheap delusion is his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. You are the truth of everything that you perceive. When a sculptor looks at a formless piece of marble he sees, buried with its, within its formless mass, his finished piece of art, the sculptor, instead of making his masterpiece, merely reveals it by removing that part of the marble which hides his conception. The same applies to you. Education is not accomplished by putting something into man. Its purpose is to draw out of man the wisdom which is latent within him. We do not like, we do not like what is happening to us. It is a sure sign that we are in the need of, of a change of mental diet. Spiritual growth is the gradual, I would say, transition from a God of tradition to a God of experience. Goddard has influenced many with his ideas. Last one. Alright. Thanks for listening, everybody. Talk to you soon.